This video is hexokinase in 3D and is meant to be viewed with Google Cardboard or a VR headset. You can grab a cardboard for about 15 bucks and enjoy a really cool 3D experience. Or you can mosey on over to my 2D version of this video. You should watch what does a protein really look like first so that you understand what you're seeing here. But if you're ready, pop your mobile device into your VR device and let's begin. Carbohydrates are an important source of energy. Some tissues like the brain and kidneys exclusively use glucose for energy. And glucose can produce energy even in the absence of oxygen, like when your muscles are working over time. The protein spinning around here is hexokinase, the first enzyme involved in carbohydrate metabolism in most living cells. Hexokinase is an enzyme, so it catalyzes a chemical reaction, and the kinase part of the name means it adds a phosphate to something. This is the overall reaction shown in a way that you're probably used to seeing it. Glucose reacts with ATP, and a phosphate group replaces the hydrogen on one of the OH groups. Now, let's view these molecules in a more biochemical way. Here's glucose shown as sticks, which is a common way to look at molecules bound to proteins. I've colored carbon white, and the oxygen atoms are in their CPK red. We can also look at a side view of this molecule and see that it sits in a chair conformation. Those chair diagrams you might have had to draw for OCHEM class are relevant. Now let's compare this to the product of the reaction, glucose 6-phosphate, which I'll call G6P. We have a new CPK color to introduce here. Phosphorus atoms are orange. Our other substrate is ATP. Look at how huge this molecule is. There's the adenosine ring, the sugar, and the triphosphate group. It looks a whole lot smaller when we abbreviate it as three letters. ADP is the other product of the reaction. Notice the terminal phosphate from ATP has been cleaved off. Phosphate groups are negatively charged in the body, and the charges would be drawn on these oxygen atoms. Glucose is a neutral molecule and passes from the bloodstream into the cell easily. Once the phosphate is on there, the charge prevents it from leaving the cell, so it stays inside to provide energy for cellular processes. Now let's look at hexokinase. There are four isoforms of this enzyme. Isoforms are enzymes that perform the same reaction but have different, though often similar, amino acid sequences. First, let's look at hexokinase 4, also called glucokinase. This form is predominantly found in the liver, and when glucose levels are high, it facilitates storage of glucose as long chains of glycogen for later use. When the enzyme is unbound, it exists in this open form, but once a molecule of glucose binds, the enzyme clamps shut around it. This change in conformation is called induced fit. Let's check that out one more time. When unbound, glucokinase is wide open. Glucose binds, and the protein changes shape and closes down around it. So cool. In mammals, Hexokinase isozymes 1, 2, and 3 are twice as large as glucokinase. Let's take a look at hexokinase 1 as our example. The amino acid sequence and structure of each half is very similar, so scientists hypothesize that this is because the gene for the protein was doubled up in the genome during evolution. The ultimate protein product resulted from fusion of the two genes. The halves of the protein are linked covalently by this alpha helix. What's super neat about this enzyme is that only one half actually performs the reaction. The C-terminal unit, which I've colored cyan, performs catalysis, and the yellow N-terminal piece binds the product of the reaction, G6P. Binding G6P changes the shape of the C-terminal unit and inhibits enzyme activity. If there's a lot of G6P, there's no reason for the enzyme to make more. Inhibition of an enzyme by a product of the same pathway is called feedback inhibition. And since the inhibition occurs by binding the inhibitor outside of the active site, it's also called allosteric inhibition. 
there is an amazing crystal structure of glucokinase that I'm going to show you. The enzyme has basically been caught in the act of catalysis. First, let's review the structure of ATP. The phosphates are linked together by oxygen atoms. But in this molecule, ANP, the last phosphorus atom is linked through a nitrogen atom. This is an important molecule in studying enzymes because this last phosphate cannot be broken off. Structurally, it's similar enough to ATP that it'll bind in its place, but it cannot do the reaction. Let's look at the active site of glucokinase now and see where the chemical reaction magic happens. In this crystal structure, there's a molecule of glucose bound. The OH groups on glucose are interacting with nearby amino acid residues in hydrogen bonds. I've shown the important active site residues as green sticks and the hydrogen bonds as yellow dashes. Now here's ANP. It's also making hydrogen bonds to nearby amino acids. But here it's making a bond to a red sphere. That red sphere is a water molecule, and the water makes hydrogen bonds with the backbone of the enzyme. We call this a water-mediated hydrogen bond. You see, a protein crystal is not a hard crystal. It's a flexible crystal that forms with lots of water molecules trapped inside. If it dried out completely, it would lose its shape. Since water is abundant in the human body, we need to mimic that environment, and protein crystals are therefore quite hydrated. I want to point out one interaction here in a little more detail. This is an interaction between a phosphate oxygen and a lysine. This is likely an ionic bond. The phosphate has negative charge at biological pH, and lysine is one of the basic amino acid residues. It gains a proton at biological pH and becomes positively charged. So it's important to remember rules for ionization when looking at crystal structures. But wait a second, there's also this gray sphere. That's a magnesium ion. Hexokinase requires that ATP bind with magnesium to perform the reaction. Magnesium is an enzyme helper, and that's why it's important to have in your diet. The metal has a 2 plus charge, and this interacts with the negative charges on the phosphate oxygens, which helps it bond to glucose. Look how close glucose's oxygen atom is to the phosphate. It's positioned perfectly to react, if this were ATP. So neat. Now check out this aspartate residue over here. This is an acidic amino acid and is an anion at biological pH. This is the amino acid residue that accepts the proton off of glucose, which allows it to use those electrons that are left behind to bond to the phosphate group. I want to show you one more way that you might see the active site of this protein rendered. Sometimes for clarity, only the active site residues are shown. Then none of the rest of the protein gets in the way and we can clearly see the most important amino acids. Thanks for sticking around to the end and diving into an active site with me. I'm amazed every time I learn about an enzyme, and it's so powerful that I'm able to look at a crystal structure myself and prove why an enzyme can do the amazing chemistry that it does. There are links in the video description for modeling software and to these crystal structures. Go to the PDB and look at some proteins.